Hello and uh, welcome to the third part of this series uh, where we are going to continue with our certification, one of the projects that we are doing in this particular course, uh, which is basically land string manipulation by building a cipher. So uh, in this part, we are going to proceed with steps number 21 all the way to 30. And uh, our main focus is going to be first a recap on identification, uh, also a recap on variable naming, and uh, a much in-depth on how to manipulate strings in Python in a given code. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started with step number 21. So Python relies on identification to indicate blocks of code. A colon at the end of a line is a signal that a new identity block of code will follow. So when no identity block is found after the final colon, the code execution stops and an identification error is drawn. Therefore, there is no output anymore. Restore the identification for print i call. So uh, we need to restore the identification for this statement of the for the print function here. And I remember uh, in the previous steps we learned that identification in Python only takes four spaces. So for that we are going to add four spaces in this particular step. And uh, check our code to make sure everything is correct and proceed to the next challenge. Step number 22. The iteration variable can have a valid name, but it's convenient to give a meaningful name. Rename your i variable to cha. So uh, what we are supposed to do is like uh, we are supposed to give a, mean a meaningful name to our character. And uh, in this case here, I is not a good name uh, to, rep to represent uh, what we are trying to do here. So we are going to replace it with cha. And uh, since we are replacing it in the for loop statement, we also need to replace it in the print function so that it can reflect on our console on the side here. So let's check our code to make sure it's working and proceed to the next challenge. And on to step number 23. Now, before printing the current character, declare a variable called index and assign the value returned by alphabet.findchar to, to this variable. So uh, what this statement requires us to do is like uh, before proceeding to this print function here, in between here, we need to add another variable uh, that is known as index. And we need to assign it the value of alphabet.findchar. And inside the brackets, we pass in the char variable. And uh, all, remember earlier on, uh, we also discussed the main function of the find function. So basically, it is used to find uh, as a given character in a string. And uh, that's the purpose of the find function here. So basically, uh, what this code is, it's like it's going to check whatever character will be passing in if it exists in our alphabet. And for that, let's proceed and check if this step passes and proceed to the next challenge. And uh, that will be challenge number 24, where we do an introduction to what an argument is. An argument is an object or an expression passed on passed to a function between the parentheses. So anything that is passed in here is known as an argument when it is called. So uh, so for example, char here can be said it's an argument since it's passed to the print function whenever we are calling it. So um, the print function can take multiple arguments separated by a comma. Add a second argument to the print char function so that it prints the character and its index inside the alphabet. So uh, this step requires us, uh, as we have learned here, that an, a function can take more than one argument, uh, but the only catch is they need to be separated by a comma. So and uh, we are required here to add a second uh, argument to our print function. And uh, the name of the argument is index. So we are going to add a comma here and add the index m. And uh, as you can see on the right side of our console here, uh, after adding the index argument to the print function, all our characters have been given 
a value uh, which it corresponds to the string in the alphabet. This represents each index of the letter in the alphabet string we have here. And as you can see, uh, the letter H here has been given a negative 1, same as the space and same as letter W. So we are going to learn more about why this is happening in the next step. So for now, let's check our code and make sure everything passes and proceed to the next challenge. And here it is. Find is again returning negative 1 for uppercase letters, meaning the letters that have been highlighted by negative 1 aren't present in our alphabet string. So how do we approach that? So uh, for this, uh, we are going to learn more how to do this in the later steps. But for now, uh, what you're going to do is that we are going to iterate over the text, change the for loop to iterate over text.lower. So uh, basically, this step requires us to convert our text string here to be into lowercase so that it can be it can resemble the strings that are present in the alphabet. So for that, we need to inside our for loop at the beginning of it, we need to add the dot lower function to it. So it's going to be text dot lower. And remember to include the parentheses. And uh, as you can see, oh, from our on the right side here, let's go ahead and check our code. And everything passes correctly. Uh, as you can see, comparing it to the previous step, uh, all the strings have been replaced and written in lowercase. And the numbers that were negative 1, that was letter H and letter W, are now have now been assigned their, ind their corresponding index value. The only thing that's remaining is the space that has not been accounted for in our string value here. So let's proceed to the next challenge. And uh, that's uh, step number 26. At the end of your loop body, declare a variable called new underscore index and assign it the value of index plus shift to this variable. So uh, we are required to follow the variable declaration uh, syntax and declare a new variable uh, known as new underscore index and assign it the value of index plus shift. And uh, let's check this code uh, to make sure everything passes correctly. And it does proceed to the next challenge. Strings are immutable, which means they cannot be changed once created. Use the bracket notation to access the first letter in text and try to change it into a character of your choice. So uh, basically, uh, this step uh, is where we do an introduction of string manipulation and uh, it basically what it means that once you have created a string, it cannot be altered unless by trying to create a new string of that version. So for this text here, we are supposed to alter the first letter of our index here. And uh, so uh, for that, you can go ahead and do a, an example of this. And uh, remember the first letter in its the first letter in an index, the first value in an index is represented by a zero. And uh, we are going to change it by maybe, let's say, a letter like X. And remember, strings are represented in quotes, either single or double quotes. Let's check to see if this passes our code. And let's submit our code and go to the next challenge. Now, if you try to change the individual characters of a string, you will get a type error. However, a variable can be reassigned into another string. So, uh, Changing a string, a single character in a string can lead to an error. The only thing that can work is replacing the entire string with another string. And uh, for this, we are supposed, for this exercise, we are supposed to get rid of the string that we are trying to replace it with. So after deleting it, we needed to assign it another string. And uh, for this, remember, uh, we need to assign it this albatross here. Check our code. As you can see on the console here, the entire string that was there before, which was Hello World, has, in, has been replaced with the new assignee that you have added. Meaning uh, the the first uh, string that we had declared is, is now isn't accounted for, uh, but rather it's replaced by the second one that we have declared at the moment. So let's proceed to the next step. 
which is step number 29 and uh, as you can see each character of the reassigned string gets printed inside the loop that's true go back to the original string by deleting the text reassignment so this step requires us to delete the reassignment that we had added just now and proceed to the step number 30 where now you need to create a new char variable at the end of your loop body set the value to this so at the end of our for loop statement we need to add a new variable name no, no named new underscore char and assign it a value of alphabet bracket notation pass in the new underscore index value and yes that works correctly let's check our code and proceed to the next step and that passes correctly let's proceed to the next challenge which will be in the next part of this video series thank you for watching